we are going to log into the application first we have to log into the application by giving the username and password I told you already there will be one URL should be given and when you copy and paste the URL then you get the login page this is the login page you will be given with username and password so I'm entering the username and password so the username will be like this and password will be given you have to enter after logging to the application you will be getting left hand side the responsibility names we have responsibility names all the responsibilities like each responsibility meant for one module let us say we have different modules you can see here bills of material mainly we have our own modules like when we go for supply chain management and manufacturing supply chain management manufacturing means in supply chain management we have the base module that is inventory inventory the inventory is the base module for any other supply chain management and manufacturing modules inventory is the base that is the reason we start with inventory once we comfortable we feel comfortable with the inventory transactions and setup then we move on to the dependent modules like distributions sales manufacturing when i say inventory is the base module what it does what is inventory we already discussed any organization which is doing the business should have inventory if it is not having inventory they will not be having items because item will be defined in the inventory itself when item is not defined in the inventory then item will not be visible for purchasing and if you want to buy the item then item will not be available for buying similarly when you want to sell the item item will not be available for selling the item and manufacturing anyway if item is not there you cannot manufacturing you, you cannot manufacture so that is the reason like inventory is the base module where items are managed like inventory management we call it as that is the reason when you have inventory management in which we have storekeeper who is concerned about maintaining the items what are the items buyer has bought like buyer has placed the order with respect to the supplier we discussed already one example like one company we have taken like that is tata motor when you go for motor automotive industry there are different raw materials like bolts nuts bearings we have sub assemblies like brake brake assembly clutch assembly steering then engine tires chassis then we have many other items like so you take any item not every item is manufactured in tata motors tata car tata indica or tata manja whatever it may be those items are finished good items tata motor is the company which is doing the business by selling the finished good items to the customer in this process if you take tata motor let us discuss let us focus on inventory when i come to inventory of tata motor let us say every item has to be kept in inventory if that is the case some of the items are manufactured items some of the items are purchased items so both the items whether you manufacture after manufacturing you got the finished good what is finished product finished product means by consuming all the raw materials you are getting end product whatever the end product that is called finished good that finished good 
is also an item. Sub assembly is also an item. Raw material is also an item. All these items are kept in inventory only. So the only thing is some of the items are purchased items, some of the items are manufactured items. In this process, we have we are going to deal with item. How the item should be defined? What kind of items we are going to define? How we are going to use those items in the transactions? How we are going to complete the transactions? That's what we are going to see as per the inventory transactions and inventory management. Now, let us go to inventory module. So these are all responsibilities. We have inventory. Click on this. So whenever this plus icon has been clicked, like it will be expanded, in which we have, whenever you are having again within this, if you have any plus icon, then that is called menu. And each menu, if you expand again, it will be having functions. In case menu itself is having again plus icons, then that is called sub menu. When it is sub menu, again within sub menu we will be having functions. So this is how. See, in case if you have within this plus icon, if you have any of those functions are having plus icons before that, then that function is called menu, not function. Within the menu, we can have sub menu, and sub menu can have plus icon when you expand. You can have functions like this to open the application you have to click on one of those functions to open the application completely you should click on one function so I'm clicking on sub inventory transfer when you click on sub inventory transfer When you click on sub inventory transfer, it will open the application completely. Now, it is asking, this is the pop-up box we got. We clicked on sub inventory transfer, but it has asked, which organization are you going to work? Which organization? As per our multi-org structure, what is the topmost organization? It is business group. Within the business group, we are going to have multiple ledgers. And each ledger is going to have multiple legal entities. And each legal entity is going to have multiple operating units. Each operating unit we are going to have. Within the operating units, we have inventory organizations and those inventory organizations are nothing but warehouses within the warehouse we have sub inventories warehouse itself is inventory and within the inventory we have sub inventory within the sub inventory we have locators the locators are nothing but exact position of that particular item in the inventory warehouse that can be row rack bin so i already told you in case you missed the class you can listen those recording classes you know recording files just listen and concentrate on multi arc structure it's very important whatever the classes we are going to have here onwards everything is related to multi arc structure because if you are doing the transactions inventory transactions inventory is a part of operating unit 
So there are certain questions whenever you are doing the transactions and you are preparing some documents. There are some interview questions like at what level we are going to do that. Like let us say you are buying the item. Buying is the process that can be done at operating unit level. But what you are buying? You are buying an item and that item has to be received at inventory only. Means receiving transaction is inventory level, inventory organization level, whereas purchasing process is at operating unit level. That's very important. That is the reason many questions like purchasing at what level, sales at what level, payables at what level, receivables at what level, these are all operating unit level. Inventory, whenever there is a transaction with respect to item, those transactions are called to be at inventory organization level. Let us say you bought, you, you bought the item from the supplier. Now you are receiving the item that receiving is nothing but inventory transaction and you are selling the item sales is at operating unit level but you are giving the item to outside you are giving the item to customer when you are giving that means item is going out at what point item is going out that is nothing but issue transaction receiving you are making a receipt against the PO that you raise it to the supplier and against that PO we are going to receive the item that receiving is inventory of inventory transaction at the time of sales you are selling the item there is a sales order that is at operating unit level but you are selling selling means like item should be given to customer at what point of time you are giving the item to the customer that point of transaction you know at that point the transaction is called sales order issue that is nothing but inventory transaction now let us entering let us enter into the system so i have to select one organization let us say my organization is this okay where I can see manufacturing as well as procurement, sales and everything. Discrete. So remaining organizations, have you seen this? Like there is an item master organization where we are going to define all the items and this master item, this master item organization is used for definition of all the items in this particular organization and this item access will be given to all the remaining organizations. Whereas we have two organizations as a discrete, that means only two organizations are manufacturing units. Remaining, remaining centers are, remaining companies are, remaining organizations are distribution centers. So all these inventory organizations we have, but I want the organization where we have supply chain management and manufacturing. So that is the reason I am taking this discrete. Now click on select that organization. In case you might have selected, I clicked on subunity transfer. Have you remembered this? This particular form, this particular function I clicked. So that was the reason. Now we are able to see subunity transfer form. Okay. If you, you can drag it. Okay. Like this position. Sub inventory transfer, you have clicked on sub inventory transfer. So we could see the form has been open with respect to sub inventory transfer form. Now, Mohan, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Actually, there is some issue with my laptop. Like um, sometimes it's, it's getting uh, disconnected and again it's getting reconnected. So I think now you can see three sessions are created, right? Pardon? See, whatever the in case you have the disturbance, no need to worry. Just okay. in case, as long as you are comfortable, you can listen. Otherwise, uh, silently you can quit. And whenever you are comfortable, you can go to classroom and listen the audio file or video file. Okay. 
So in case you try for try for the laptop and you get, you get the problem solved and try to join. Okay, no need to mention. No need to mention. It is recording. And what are the question you are asking? That will be recorded. Okay. okay. If in case it is related to subject question, you raise the question. Otherwise, simply you can quit and you can join, rejoin. No issues. I have no problem. Okay. Okay, we have subunity transfer right away, but I'm not going to do subunity transfer. I click it from here, right? I click it from here. So when I click here, this form has opened. Okay, now if I want to open this form by closing this, okay, I can close by clicking on into mark. Now, whatever you can see here, whatever you can see in the responsibility, inventory, menus and functions, all these functions, menus and everything you can see from this particular form. This is Java initiated form where we can have all these transactions and plus icons, wherever, whatever you could see in the responsibilities and functions and menus, the same thing you can see from here. Okay, so here you could see all these menus because wherever the plus icon is there, that is nothing but a menu. When you expand menu, we can see functions or sub menus. Within the responsibility, we have menus. Within the menus, we have sub menus within the sub menus we have functions now if i click this double click okay now it is expanding now you can see within the plus icon we have one more plus and that menu function menu is called receiving when it is receiving if you expand receiving again it is opening some more those are called functions this is called sub menu this is called menu and this is called responsibility now we have transactions when you expand transactions we have sub menus and within the sub menus we have functions and if you scroll down we can have some more menus if you expand if you expand each menu again you can see sub menus and functions so initially we'll be going slowly okay only thing is so that you will be comfortable today and tomorrow day after tomorrow and on after that you can you will you feel comfortable so wherever i click like you know that those places because uh, we are going to discuss menu sub menus functions whenever i say menu within the menu within the within the sub menu or there is a toolbar what is toolbar so whatever the toolbar in the top of the form you know on the top of the form you can see whatever you can see this is toolbar where we have certain icons and there are there are like these are all like you might have used word document excel file and whatever it may be it is just like that we have toolbar here this is meant for if you want to exit from the application you can click on this and you have edit copy and paste you can do view records if you want to find something and if you want to submit a report so if you want to submit a report so then definitely you can do the report running uh, you, can, you can you can run the report from view requests how to run i will tell you this is a folder we can use this folder to show the respective fields whatever the fields you if you feel some fields are very important for you and even if are not important for you you can hide whatever the important you can you, you can you can customize like it's it's just the folder gives all the options all the fields and what are the field you want to hide what are the field you want to show you can customize i will show you then we have toolbar tools you can see all these functions expand expand all no, from tools you can expand any menu sub sub menu all these things if you click this 
then we have tools expand when you expand that will be expanded that's what so like this we have and these icons plus minus plus plus and minus minus you can see see I did something I expanded some menus and now I don't want I want to collapse all see when you keep cursor for one to two seconds on any of these icons for what it meant for it will give a message okay it will give you a message so if you want to collapse all collapse all means wherever you clicked plus icon to expand and that can be collapsed see if you expand this if I want to expand this then anything plus plus meant for expanding minus minus meant for collapsing when you click on plus plus it will expand how see when you plus click on plus plus it will expand all you can't see anywhere plus icon why because it has expanded all plus plus means that is the meaning minus minus means collapse all plus plus means expand all then what is what is the importance of plus and minus plus meant for only one menu to be expanded yes you have to click on plus icon that will expand only transactions okay it won't expand move orders it won't expand on hand availability and all those things okay in this process we have these icons shortcuts okay so what happens sometimes somebody might have expanded this and this and what else something else like if you scroll down okay I expanded this and now I want to collapse all then if it is the simplest way clicking plus minus minus if you expand all if you want to expand then plus plus then it will expand all so this is the way like you have to use you have to use these toolbars and icons these are available to use the application to the max maximum extent like if you know the functionality of each and every function then the only thing is whenever there is a situation and based on the situation you will directly go to that particular function and we will try to use that now we have some of the transactions we can do but before going to transaction what is item how we are going to define the item how we are going to make use of that item let us see in the system whenever you want to define the item we have the navigation based on the navigation you have to go to the item form open the item form and define the item what are the basic requirements to define the item let us see now I told you we are going to discuss the items when I go to item let us say we have master item we have master item we have organization item what is the difference between master item and organization item it's very important question it's very important question master item is meant for defining the all the items what are the item you want to use that has to be defined in the master item first then what are the item you define in the master that can be assigned to organizations what are organizations you can see here if you click change organization this is favorite list okay so actual navigation is in the, at the bottom of the responsibility all the menus and functions there is change organization what are the organizations available right away if you click on this it is asking which organization you would like to change to which organization you would like to change so I am at this organization I want to be at this organization only then you can go for 
item definition by going to items this is the navigation go to items master item organization item we have master item click on master item and you click on master item it has opened the form where you have to give all the yellow fields are mandatory all the white fields are optional all the grayed out fields are you cannot edit okay now we have item form every item will be having a name and the description with this description means it is elaborated like the lengthy name item code definitely it will be having some abbreviations it is a short code code is different and description is different code is nothing but item name and description is the elaborated one and after that we have unit of measure what is unit of measure you know unit of measure the name itself is indicating the unit with what unit we are going to measure the item if i say 10 apples are there on the table means what how many apples are there on the table if i ask the question the candidate answers 10 is that correct if somebody answers like 10 numbers so or 10 each is so when there is a unit there is an unit then that is said to be meaningful answer if somebody says how many apples are there on the table means 10 number 10 each is in case we have 12 in case we have 12 on the table you can say 12 numbers 12 each is or somebody says one dozen everything is correct so unit of measure is nothing but to measure the item you want particular unit that unit use it for measuring the item so every item will be having one particular unit without having unit of measure you cannot have without having unit of measure you cannot have item to be defined in the system so in this process let us see simply how to define an item there are certain things to be discussed which are very important let me define one item i want to define a desktop item let us say a desktop item definitely it comes under it comes under computers okay now if i want to define a desktop then definitely i have to define a code like this it is desktop let us say dt or a laptop if you want to define laptop lt having 500 gb hard disk okay hd then with os but os is windows 7 let us say like this then what else then it is i definition okay hd let us say like this this is the item code so whenever you are practicing on the application it's always better to open the notepad 
and keep track keep tracking the all the details like whenever you want to track something now I define this item code let me copy this now this is item code now description I am writing like this it is nothing but laptop with 500 GB hard drive having Windows 7 with high definition okay so now come to unit of measure I can say always laptops by numbers only if I say laptop how many laptops are there you would say how many numbers are how many each is or if it is 12 then how many dozens it is multiples of 12 then definitely you would say how many dozens so like that we have unit of measures see these are all unit of measures we have each also we have number is not there okay you can say a number if you want to define you will see when you want to define the unit of measure we will learn how to define unit of measures and how to convert them to another unit of measure so that's what we are going to discuss slowly now I want to select that is each I want there are primary and secondary we have primary unit of measure say primary and secondary what is the use of primary and secondary the same example I am taking I said we have 12 numbers I can say one dozen so 12 numbers equal to one dozen if I say dozen is the primary one in the inventory whenever you want to see the item quantity in the system that will show you the quantity with dozens only it's very important point and important question what is the difference between primary and secondary primary is is the unit of measure with which we are going to measure the item at the same time track the item in the inventory secondary in the sense see let us take for example we have laptops how many we have 12 12 numbers okay now have you manufactured the item or you purchased the item let us say you purchased when you purchased you might have raised the purchase order definitely when you raise the purchase order there should be item to be entered into the purchase order when you entered the item in the purchase order there is a quantity how much quantity you might have entered I said 12 numbers equal to one dozen and my primary unit of measure is one dozen when it is dozen when it is dozen okay that means we have to measure always the item by dozens only in the inventory when you go to inventory in the system it will show you in dozens only if you have 12 dozens if you have 12 items only then one dozen is the quantity one will be shown as on hand quantity in case if you say primary as each you have 12 items in the inventory then it will show you 12 eaches 12 eaches it will show you the basic difference is how you would like to 
track the item quantity in the inventory. If you want to track by secondary or primary. Primary in the sense, it will system will show you on hand quantity always 12 numbers. In case if you are tracking primary as secondary, you know tracking by secondary, then it would say dozens. Both, yeah, it is, it, you are going to have a flexibility to use anything. You can change always, like whenever you receive certain items, either you can receive by dozens or numbers. When you receive a numbers, you have to enter the quantity as 12. When you receive by dozens, you have to enter the number as 1. Simple, because 1 dozen equal to 12 numbers is the conversion. We are going to discuss what is unit of measure conversion also. Very important topic. Now, item code has been entered. Description has been entered. Then we have primary unit of measure. Then what else? Remaining fields are having some values. No issues. When primary is each, then there is a secondary. Do you have any secondary? See, there is a dozen. Okay. See, we are getting a message. If tracking and pricing are set to primary, then secondary unit of measure can only have none value. This is very important. Because you are going to use the primary, then why are you entering secondary unit of measure? Okay. In case it will let you to change it. In case primary pricing as secondary. Let's delete this. Okay. Then it will ask you what is the secondary. Defaulting. Which one? Default I want. There will be a conversion between each and dozen. What is each? Is unit of measure to measure one item. What is secondary? Secondary is a dozen. Where I can buy these many dozens. Or I can sell these many dozens. So, tracking in the inventory with primary. Whereas, while doing the transaction, you can have secondary while buying while selling so in this process we have primary and tracking as primary pricing as secondary i want primary only then you cannot have the secondary so select this okay now conversions there are unit of measure conversions very important Standard and item specific are both. Which conversion to be used? I want to use both. When it is both, then what, what does it mean? That means the specific unit of measure and standard unit of measure conversion. Both can be applied. What is standard? What is item specific? A very important concept and very complicated one. Unit of measure conversions. When I say standard, one dozen equal to 12 numbers. Do you agree? Yes. Then I will go to UK and I would say one dozen equal to 12 numbers. Will they agree? Yes, they will agree. Then I will go to Germany. Then I would say 12 numbers equal to one dozen. Everybody agrees. Why? It is standard. It is international standards item specific what is item specific in uk in america in middle east in india we have certain unit of measures specific to item what is that what is that item specific is nothing but 
apart from the standard standard means how many numbers equal to one dozen how many milligrams equal to one gram how many grams equal to one kg how many kg equal to one quinta how many kg equal to one ton these are all standards wherever you go all of you mute from your side besides your name there is a mic icon please click on that and mute from your side if you are not muting i will block you who is this guy 8965476645 who is that guy Ramarao Okay. I'll check with Vinod in case he's a unknown guy. I will block him. Now. We have the item code then description primary unit of primary unit of measure. And secondary unit of measure and you want to track by primary pricing as primary then we have conversions standard item specific and both we are discussing discussing conversions what is conversion Okay, now the unit of measures concept is very important. Listen carefully. We have grams, milligrams, kgs, quintas. How many grams equal to one kg? How many kgs equal to one quinta? How many kgs equal to one ton? Anybody can say that. Thousand grams equal to one kg. Hundred kgs equal to one quinta. Thousand kgs equal to one ton. It is standard wherever you go across the world. Across the world, the unit of measures are same. Correct. So, similarly, let us take numbers. Twelve numbers equal to one dozen. I told you already. Who is this guy? Eight nine six, one eight four six twelve, Rama Rao. Who is that guy? So no need to join. I am blocking you. That's it. Okay, now we have all these unit of measures, and there is a conversion. 
Similarly, if you go for numbers, how many numbers equal to one dozen? And I defined all those conversions. But if you take grams, kgs, and everything is weight, right? You are weighing the item by kgs, by grams, by quintals, by tons. Similarly, you count the items by numbers, each is, right? Dozens, you count. This is the unit of measure to count. That is the unit of measure to weigh. Now tell me, weight, what are the unit of measures coming under weight class? What are the unit of measures coming under quantity class? What are the unit of measures coming under time class? What are the unit of measures coming under volume class? What are the unit of measures coming under area class? What are the unit of measures coming under length class? What are the unit of measures coming under distance class? Can you answer? Now, numbers, each, numbers, dozens, these are meant for quantity. Grams, milligrams, kgs, all these are weights, weights. So, similarly, time class. We have time class. What is time class? Time is measured by seconds, minutes, hours, days years, months, you take anything. How many seconds equal to one hour? How many seconds equal to one minute first? 60, min 60 seconds equal to one minute. 60 minutes equal to one hour. How many hours equal to one day? How many days equal to one month? How many months equal to one year? Okay. So what are all these? These are nothing but unit of measures in time class now now come to length class somebody says millimeter centimeter meter then we have yards we have these are all one foot foot square feet you use it to say that right one foot how many feet so what is the Length measured by your tall, like how you know your length you were measured by centimeters. Now, if you take distance class, kilometers, miles, what is kilometer? 1000 meters equal to 1 kilometer. Then how many kilometers equal to 1 mile? 1 1.6 kilometers equal to 1 mile. What are all these? These are all distance class. Now, can we have relation between different unit of measures coming under same class? The answer should be yes. How? Gram, milligram, kgs, all these are weight class. But we can have conversion. How? 1 gram equal to 1 by 1000 kgs. Because 1 kg equal 1000 grams. But we have conversion factor. What is that conversion factor? That conversion factor is 1 by 1000. Right? The conversion factor is one by thousand. So one kg equal to thousand grams, one gram equal to one by thousand multiplied by kgs. That means there is a conversion factor.
You can have two unit of measures, but you can have a relation between them by having conversions. So that conversion is called unit of measure conversion. It is a very complicated one we are going to discuss. In those conversions, we have standard conversion, we have item specific conversion. Standard conversion, I told you, item specific, I am now, now I am telling you. The item specific is, if you are from Telugu states, let us say, in Telangana, we use it to say, if you go to any shop, and you want something 250 grams okay now you would say to the shopkeeper I want 250 grams of so and so item we have one fo one fourth of kg right 250 grams means so somebody says power kilo what is power kilo? Somebody says the kilo. What is that? So, if you want in, if you want to incorporate those the kilos and power kilos, you can have P A V power kilo, the kilo, A R T H A kilo. You can write something. And in the defense, you can define in the system. Why? Because if you were warehouse from Hyderabad, then definitely this system meant for using the local language also. Then definitely you have to define power kilo or the kilo also. And somebody says chatak. What is chatak? It's nothing but 250 grams. The same chatak you go to Andhra and you tell. You ask in chatak then definitely they won't give you have to ask power kilo then only they will give 250 grams but end of the day there are also 250 grams you are getting here also you are getting 250 grams what does it mean means chatak means 250 grams in telangana power kilo means 250 grams in andhra that's it and This is specific unit of measures with respect to the particular region. What is item specific? The item specific is nothing but if you say one item you are packing in a cotton box. Okay. You are packing in a box. That box is measured by volume. That box is measured by volume. Let us take one box which is having one meter length, one meter width, one meter height. The volume is length multiplied by breadth multiplied by height. LBH. The unit of measure for volume is L measured by meters, width measured by meters or centimeters or whatever it may be. But end of the day, software calculation what are the unit you are getting that is having one unit of measure what is that that is meter cube or centimeter cube because length multiplied by breadth multiplied by height every length breadth or height whatever it may be it can be measured by centimeters or meters or whatever it may be when you multiply it by multiply with one meter with one meter and and with one meter again so meter multiplied by meter multiplied by another meter meter cube is nothing but volume that is the reason when you say box the volume is meter cube when you say rectangle the area is l into l multiplied by breadth length multiplied by breadth lb is nothing but area length measured by meter breadth measured by meter meter multiplied with meters then meter square meter square is nothing but area so if you buy a, buy a home or a flat you would say how many square feet right what is that 
SFT. What is that square feet? We are having a length, we are having a width. Length multiplied by width. Length we are having, let us say, 20 meters. Width we are having 50 meters. 20 multiplied by 50, that is 1000. 1000 square feet. Because if you say meters, then square meter. If it is feet, like length is 20 feet, width is 50 feet, then multiply both 1000 square feet. This is what. Somebody says square feet, somebody says square foot, but both are same. So there are certain standards, there are certain item specific unit of measures. When you say one box, box is standard. Let us say one meter width, one meter height, one meter length is the box. In that box, how many laptops can be packed? That means I can say 10 laptops can be packed. Okay. Then how many desktops can be packed? Desktops. Only two. Why? That is item specific. The box is standard size only. But still, when you say desktop is the item, you can accommodate only two. When I say one box of desktops equal to two desktops, that's it. But whereas the same box for laptop is an item, again, another item. But for laptop, it is 10 items in one box. That means one box of laptops, if I say, that is nothing but 10 laptops. This is what item specific unit of measure conversion. Sometimes I can use item specific, sometimes I can use standards. So that is the reason the option is here, both. Then, if you go to next tab, these are all called as tabs. When you go for, go for next tab, inventory, we have bills of material, we have asset management, costing, purchasing, receiving, phys physical attributes. Then we have general planning, then MPS, MRP planning, lead times, then we have work in process, then we have order management, invoicing, we have these are all process manufacturing. What is process manufacturing? We are going to learn manufacturing, right? What kind of manufacturing we are learning? We are learning discrete manufacturing. What is discrete manufacturing? What is process manufacturing? Manufacturing are different types we have in which prominent discrete and process. What is discrete? What is process? Anyway, we are learning discrete. Then what is process manufacturing? Are we learning this? No. But what is process manufacturing? It's very simple. When we are going to use the Oracle application for a company, what kind of company it is? The company is, let us say, car manufacturer. It is called as discrete manufacturer. The manufacturer is cement manufacturer. It is not discrete manufacturer. Then what it is? It is process manufacturer. Now let us discuss the difference. I said car manufacturing is a discrete manufacturing. Whereas cement manufacturing is cement manufacturing is process manufacturing. What is the basic difference? The basic difference is a car can be manufactured with multiple items like tires, bearings, chassis, clutch, brake, engine, body parts, steering, deck system, chairs, then body mounting, then 
what else anything else now i manufactured the car now i want to dismantle can you dismantle the item yes definitely you remove all the bolts nuts and everything you will get back all the bearings bolts nuts tires brakes clutch engine everything you will get back so all the items again you can remove from the assembly and you can bring back to your inventory now let us come to cement the manufacturer is cement manufacturing company it is having raw materials like limestone granules we have colors and some chemicals we have each one is an item don't forget so we mixed with certain quantities certain percentage of quantities and we that has undergone some chemical reaction and finally you are getting a cement it is a powder then it is getting packed and each bag is called as an item cement okay you prepared you manufactured one bag of cement that is finished good right you are selling that item to custom now can you dismantle cement to different items again you cannot why because it is process manufacturing in the process manufacturing you will get a product from that product again you cannot get the raw material that you consumed in the process of manufacturing why okay another example i have fruits mangoes apples oranges carrots okay now i want to make a juice you can see in the market you can see the tins having different fruit juice cocktail okay tropicana juices we have right you might be knowing you prepare a juice we have mangoes and apples oranges and all those things you mixed and what output you got you got some mixture that is called cocktail okay from that cocktail can you get my mango my pieces of mango okay similarly orange piece orange pieces then apple pieces can i get it no so food processing industries cement factories chemical factories whatever it may be once you have used over you cannot get the item back as an original you will get the item in another format but that format cannot be changed the process where it is reversible you manufacture the item then you can dismantle the item and bring back all the raw materials back to inventory that is called discrete manufacturing discrete means separate 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 whereas process manufacturing there is a process to be followed to manufacture that particular product by consuming the raw materials as we did in discrete manufacturing but end product if you dismantle you don't get anything that is what we call it as process manufacturing but we are not discussing process manufacturing now let us come back to the initial form we have main form now inventory we have many attributes these are all check boxes wherever the check boxes are these are all called attributes these are also called as attributes but many of those attributes are blank if you go to bills of materials all are blank costing blank purchasing blank receiving okay now tell me how to fulfill all these attributes to define an item first of all you should know what kind of item it is is it a finished good item yes then 
I want I have to enable all these attributes relevant attributes it's inventory yes it's talkable yes I have to enable 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 I have to click enable enable and all the fields to be entered further I have to go to next tab I have to enable this then this and again go to asset management asset manager I have to select these values and then we have to go to costing costing should be enabled yes you have to enable so how many clicks should I do to define one item more than 300 clicks more than 300 clicks means some of the checkboxes some of the fields to be entered can you enter within one minute it's impossible so there is a shortcut to enable the respect to checkboxes against each item if you know the item type you can enable respect to checkboxes how to do that now let us see go back to main now go to tools copy from go to tools copy from there are certain templates these are all templates okay I have one template as a finished good template if you observe here at, at the rate we have at fin should good now I selected this and applied and I click done after that now let us go to inventory have you, have you seen this these are all the respective fields are checked see okay costing yes purchasing yes is it purchasable yes if you want to like this you can select now then receiving anything else to be selected you have to select like this so in the general planning we have inventory planning method we have different planning methods which plan to be followed for this particular item is it make item or buy item what is make item that means you are going to manufacture what is buy item here yeah, that means you are always going to buy this item when you are buying the source type is inventory or supplier or sub inventory supplier when you are buying when you are making the source is itself source itself is inventory okay now you have planning methods lead times what is lead time this item is laptop with 500 GB hard drive having Windows 7 with high definition screen is having a lead time of pre-processing post-processing processing fixed variable all these things what is lead time do you know that lead time is nothing but time required to produce that item simple that is man that is going to be used in manufacturing I apply template right click down run then save it okay now saved got the message now it is saved you have taken the item code does it mean that you have defined the item nothing has been defined you just defined item in the master item but you didn't assign to any organization that is very important now how to assign to organizations it is master item meant for definition of the item only now go to tools okay now there is organization assignment what is this when you click on that so when you click on change organization whatever the organization you got in the list of value the same organizations list is available here can you see that by default what are the new item just now I define for that it is enabled with only master item 
have you updated this see it is enabled approve assign it is you see it is assigned to this particular organization now i have to use this item in this particular organization and any other organizations then you have to select this if you want to select all assign all simply then in the booster let us select save it then in the booster if you want to edit something then you have to go to org attributes it is organization specific attributes see in the item master it was mandatory form and you cannot change anything see stock bill has been disabled that means it is master control what is master control whatever the attribute which has been disabled when you have gone to organization level disable those are called master attributes you cannot edit but whatever the check boxes you can see and you can edit those are maintained at organization level these are organization specific the many things are same it is just like as same as master only but only thing is here you cannot edit something whereas in master you can edit all the things okay simple anything has to be changed you can change you can enable or whatever it may be then save it this is very important why because in the organization item also something has to be changed you have to change before approving before saving okay now this item is defined you have saved and this item can be used in all these organizations because this is organization item whereas this is master item this icon meant for attribute groups this icon meant for folder this item meant for organization assignment so simply i have gone to tools and click on organization assignment in case if you want to click here it will route to the same form where the organization actions will be given that's it like this is how you have to define then you have to bring the item quantity into the inventory you have to receive the items okay now you have any questions on this Hi, Master. Again. Yeah. Uh, if you define the item in master item, okay, mm. uh, and assign to some marks, I mean two marks like that. Okay. And uh, after two days, we need to assign the item to uh, another organization. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, how can we navigate? I mean, what is the navigation process? The same navigation. Same. The question is. We have, with, uh, we have master we enable this and we enable to this also but remaining things are blank now yeah, yeah. i want to query the same item and i want to assign to remaining items yes go to master item okay. f11 is the query mode f11 is the command which brings the item form into query mode give the item code Control F11. After giving the item code, press Control simultaneously. You have to press Control and F11. Then you will get in whatever the item you define. You cannot change. If you want to change, see, nothing happens. It is frozen. You can update description, but it's, it cannot be defined. Now his question is, in the organization assignments, either way you can go. From here or from tools, we have organization assignment the same form will form will be open okay here he wants to assign remaining you can assign remaining that's it it's simple assign it and save it come out of this form then go ahead and within that organization yeah, okay. and within that organization if you assign to this particular organization and we have seen master item and in the organization item when you select to this organization 
go to org attributes the same form will be open whereas some of the attributes are editable some of the attributes are not editable whatever it may be whatever the attribute editable that is called arc control see arc control whereas whatever the one disabled that is called master control master control attributes can be updatable at master level only but organization level can be updatable at any point of time in organizations so whenever you want to enable certain restrictions are there i will discuss limitations when you are going to update when you are not going to update what to do what not to do i am going to discuss with you slowly okay you just started it's more than enough try to understand this try to defend two or three items on your own that's it you will feel comfortable then ready to make use of this item for the transactions okay you have any questions that's it then and i will send this recording file and in case somebody might have missed it, then definitely they can go to classroom and attend the class